2018 looks like a great year to be scared, and we're not even talking about politics. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most anticipated horror games of 2018. Dozens of dead whales floating belly up with unexplained lacerations. That's what I heard. For more gaming videos, check out our new spin-off channel, Mojo Plays, for in-depth reviews, thoughtful video essays, detailed character origins, and insightful commentary. Mojo Plays. Game smarter. For this list, we'll be looking at the most hotly anticipated horror games which are set to release throughout the coming year. Simple stuff. Number 10, Scorn. Scorn looks to be the most disgusting thing you'll ever see, so if you're into gore and body horror, you'll definitely need to check it out. Not much is known about the game at this time, but what we do know is that you play as a skinless human thing who is dropped into a mysterious and revolting world ripped straight from the sketchbooks of H.R. Geiger. Like, straight. Like, they copied him. Anyway. You must traverse this monster-filled macabre setting and uncover the story behind the world and your role in it. Scorn looks to have some incredibly unique visuals, a haunting atmosphere, creepy ambiance, and a blend of body horror. It's everything the stagnant FPS market really ordered. Number 9. Blasphemous Unlike most Kickstarter projects, Blasphemous is looking like it's going to deliver. The game is being developed by The Game Kitchen, the creators of 2016's point-and-click adventure The Last Door. They seem to have taken a much more horrific approach to their new game, which is styled after old-school 2D horror titles like Castlevania. It shares a similar pixelated gothic aesthetic with that iconic series, and looks to serve as a return to the adventurous and challenging 2D platforming too. While we don't know all that much about it, the classic style combined with the Game Kitchen's track record makes this a game to watch out for in the coming months. Number 8. Close to the Sun Close to the Sun is set to be the fourth game released by Storm in a Teacup, the indie team behind Nero, Enki, and Lantern. Here, you play as Rose, a journalist looking for her missing sister aboard a massive ship created by Nikola Tesla. Yeah, that Nikola Tesla. Much of the game remains enigmatic, aside from its developer and story, but what we see from the trailer looks fantastic. The game's settings and visuals seem to be borrowing heavily from the first game in the Bioshock series, and it looks to employ the same dread-filled atmosphere and sense of mystery. But you know what, we love Bioshock, so for an independent video game, Closer to the Sun looks pretty great. Number 7, System Shock Remake. <laughs> System Shock, the classic FPS slash immersive sim from 1994, which heavily influenced Bioshock, is getting a complete overhaul by Night Dive Studios, and it should be released in the second quarter of 2018. This release is set to be a bit of a mix between reboot and remaster, complete with a change in engine and revamped weapons, levels, and enemies, which are meant to make the game more accessible to modern players. They're even fixing the original's clunky dialogue and plot holes to make the game a better, more immersive experience. To those of you who've never played the original, and hardly anyone did, let us say this. You're in for a treat. But I was always here. Number 6. Overkills The Walking Dead We know that The Walking Dead well has pretty much dried up at this point, but we couldn't imagine a better Walking Dead experience than Telltale's stellar first season. That said, Swedish developer Overkill's game looks to be pretty darn good. It follows in a similar vein as Valve's Left for Dead, as it sees up to four players cooperating to wade through a zombie-filled wasteland while collecting supplies and saving survivors. Unlike Left for Dead, though, each character will have their own specific traits, abilities, and playstyles, which will undoubtedly help to add some variety and replay value. Anyway, for those itching for another Left 4 Dead style experience who don't enjoy Killing Floor, this might be your best option. Please. Number 5. Moons of Madness I've got some fairly hefty power fluctuations down here. Call it Firewatch in space, call it a walking simulator, call it whatever you want. But there's no denying that it looks pretty awesome. Unless the words walking simulator turn you off, but whatever. In Moons of Madness, you play as Shane Newart, 
an astronaut plagued by horrific hallucinations who must battle the paranormal entities seemingly haunting a Mars research station. The gameplay will consist of puzzles and scary set pieces, and it looks to be a fantastic blend of Firewatch's uneasy atmosphere, tantalizing mystery, and full-on horror. The game looks to explore the touchy subject of mental illness through hallucinatory terror, a unique blend which has a lot of intriguing possibilities. The potential's here, so hopefully it's used correctly. Number 4. Days Gone What happened? I got hit again. The squatter's off the highway. We've got to get some men together, go after them. Don't look at me, it ain't my problem. They've got Manny. We admit, Days Gone might sound like something you've seen before. It's an adventure game set in an open world, plagued by zombies who become more aggressive at night, and you must collect resources and craft weapons in order to survive. Yeah, I know, that's like basically all of 2015 in a nutshell, right? But the game also employs a few tactics to keep things fresh. You can either use a stealthy or confrontational approach to each mission, the zombies are fast and combative rather than slow and shambling, and the sheer number of them on screen even puts Dead Rising to shame. We're not saying that it will reinvent the oversaturated zombie market, but it might be a breath of fresh air. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, come on. Number three, Hunt Showdown. Showdown is a new game by Crytek, and it looks to be an interesting blend of PvP and cooperative survival horror. The game takes place within a large map in which teams, composed of two players, face off against each other and the map's AI zombies and bosses. The goal is to wade through the bosses and the zombies and then gain some XP from their corpses while defending against or attacking the other players. As the creative director explained, it's a survival game in a match-based format. It's an interesting and original concept, so we can't wait to try it out. Number 2, Call of Cthulhu, the official video game. Beers, can you hear me? The Mason! Everything is fine. Wait, what, what the hell am I doing here? It was just a nightmare. I was there! Call of Cthulhu looks to be a cornerstone in Lovecraftian horror. It's named after his most popular piece of work, after all, so yeah. The game does not see you controlling a shipmate who comes across Cthulhu, but a private investigator named Edward Pierce who is investigating the mysterious death of a Boston family. Upon his investigation, he discovers that the resurrection of Cthulhu is imminent. The game is set in a semi-open world and blends elements of stealth-based gameplay and investigations, all while incorporating the essentials of Lovecraftian cosmic horror. This game finally looks to do Lovecraft's work justice. Before we unveil our top pick, here's an honorable mention. Number 1. Agony We're kind of split on this one, actually. On the one hand, we can't wait for it because it looks stupendous, but on the other hand, our sanity might not be intact by the time we're done with it, so that might be a problem. Agony puts you in the role of a martyr from hell who can possess other demons, but what makes this game appear so unique is the terrifying combination of grotesque visuals and atmospheric sound design. It's not often that we get disgusted and completely twisted video games like this. So, it's a cause for celebration when a developer has enough courage, talent, and gusto to pull it off. Cover your head. You won't forget what you saw here. Do you agree with our 